The key concept that I want to get across with all of our drills is something that I think some, uh, most people neglect when they think about presses to handstand. Most people focus so much on building shoulder strength that they end up putting themselves in a poor position. One of the key pieces in my mind to a solid press to handstand is this idea of compression. All right? And when I talk about compression, I'm talking about creating a stacked position from hips through to hands and then allowing your legs, your lower half, to actually meet up to that stacked position. All right, so I'm going to show you the difference between those two. I'll show you what a press to handstand looks like, and this is what a lot of people who are learning presses to handstand have a tendency to do. They'll lean their shoulders in front of their hands, creating almost like a planche press to handstand, which is incredibly difficult, much more difficult than it needs to be. We're trying to create efficiency here by turning over and creating what we talked about, that compression. So shoulders in front of hands, and then pressing up from here. That kind of a press to handstand is unnecessarily challenging. All right? You're extending that lever, creating a mechanical disadvantageous position. All right? So what we'll try to do is create, like I said, compression. And what I mean by compression is when you start out, shoulders will stay over hands, hips will stay over shoulders, and we're going to try to bring our legs as close to those hands as possible as we press up. Always trying to stay nice and stacked. All right, so that's really going to be our focus, trying to keep everything as close as possible. Now, what do you guys think is being activated with that compression idea? What do you guys think is working? Okay, so midline is a big piece of it. When we talk about midline, the upper abdominals and your hip flexors are really what are compressing you into position. What do you think another big limitation might be in being able to actually feel that compressed position? Hamstring flexibility. Hamstring flexibility is a big limiting component. So if you're very tight, the only way you have to overly compensate by leaning forward to be able to get up. So you just have to kind of figure out what your big limitation might be to get that compression in place. Is it hamstring flexibility or is it hip flexor or abdominal strength? All right. So what we're going to do right now is just uh, an easy, easier compression exercise. It's a compression sit up. You're going to lay down like this, feet just 90 degrees apart. And it's meant to be done fairly slowly, OK? We're going to lay all the way down, arms overhead, and I want you to try to feel like you're peeling off the ground one vertebrae at a time, as slow as you possibly can, into a nice compressed position, the pancake position of trying to bring the chest down to the ground, doing your best to try to keep your heels flat, your heels on the ground. It's going to be really hard to keep your heels down on the ground, especially if you're doing it slow, but do the best you can. Let's just try to do five reps. I'll show you what it looks like here. Slow, 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 see if you can bring all the way off the ground. If your heels come off the ground, it's okay. Fight to keep everything in place. Nice flat back position and reaching out as far as you possibly can at that end point. And then lowering back down one vertebrae at a time as well. Okay? Good. Keep staying with it, guys. It's okay if those heels come up. Slow on the way back down. Good, Megan, nice. <laughs> reach, reach, reach. Good, Leah. Lock it up on you already? OK, guys, after you do five reps, you can turn over. You can actually get into that sealed position, drop the hips down to the ground. How'd that feel? Harder than expected? Yeah. So when we do the sealed position, we're going to do two different versions here. The first one, fingers facing out to the sides, shoulders directly over your hands. Keep those elbows locked out, basically holding up your body like they're pillars. So here you can just kind of shift your body back and forth, let the hips sink down towards the ground. Now version two is going to be all about lower half engagement, trying to be aware of what our lower half is doing even though we can't see our legs. All right? There's a big kind of disconnect that happens when people are doing movements where they can't see their legs. They think they're in perfect position, and generally the opposite is true. All right? <laughs> so what we're going to do is really feel what it's like to squeeze our heels together. All right? So what I want us to do is, from this Loose position, we're going to squeeze tight and lock those heels into place. 
lock our legs out, drive our hands into the ground, and we'll hold it for 10 seconds. Hold that for 10 seconds. Heels together. Don't let those heels come. There you go. So the difference between heels completely together and just a couple inches apart is significant. All right.